we'll now start taking a look at ggplot. So the first thing to understand is that all of the functionality of ggplot resides in a package called ggplot2, which means really that you have to load that package before you can use any of the features of ggplot. However, we are not going to be loading the ggplot2 package directly. Instead, we will install a package called tidyverse. And this package in turn contains the ggplot2 package and it also contains many other packages that we'll be using in this course and in follow-on courses. Okay, so rather than just install ggplot2 first, let's install the tidyverse package and once you install the tidyverse package, you can load the package, of course, as usual, by doing library tidyverse. What that does is that loads the tidyverse package. Now, as soon as you load the tidyverse package, you will see this result printed on your console. Uh, sometimes people think that these are error messages. Nothing. This is just informational. What it's showing you is that the tidyverse package actually consists of all these following packages ggplot2, tibble, tidyr, readr, purr, dplyr, string, and uh, farcats. So we'll be using quite a few of these packages, not all of them. Important also to note that it tells you that there are some conflicts, and this is what may uh, scare some people away. What this is telling you is that the, one of the packages that is in tidyverse, namely the package dplyr, that's what it's telling you, dplyr, and dplyr has a function called filter. Okay. Now, you are already familiar with the function called filter that you have used quite a bit earlier to subset data frames. Okay. What dplyr does is dplyr is overwriting that function called filter that you already used. So in other words, there was a base package called stats and that had the function filter which you have been using for so long. dplyr comes along and redefines the function filter to work slightly differently. Okay, so after this the function filter will work differently and we will make use of its features as we go forward with this course. Okay, so the conflicts here are nothing to worry about. This is expected. Okay, so that is about the ggplot2 functionality which we are going to get indirectly by installing the package called tidyverse but all of the functionality of ggplot actually resides in the package ggplot2 okay and as i have already said tidyverse loads ggplot2 and other packages okay so first let's look at this command so this is an example of a ggplot2 command Okay, ggplot command to plot uh, a graph. In this case, it's plotting a scatter plot. Okay, so first let's understand the components of this command. So first function you will always call when you do any ggplot is ggplot. So ggplot is the name of the function. Okay, so you're calling this function ggplot. And we're saying I want to be plotting things from the data frame called mpg. Now mpg is a data frame which is built in to the ggplot package. Now many packages come with their own data frames and ggplot has several interesting data frames that we can use for practice and mpg is one such data frame that we'll be using for practice. So all we are saying is so therefore because this package is inbuilt into ggplot there's no need for us to actually load this package separately. It's already there, so the moment you've loaded ggplot, this data frame mpg becomes available. We don't have to load it from a file or anything. Okay, so I'm saying ggplot data equals mpg because that's the data frame I'm going to be using. And notice a very peculiar syntax of ggplot. There's a plus. Okay, and this is an interesting aspect of ggplot in that you plot, make plots layer by layer, incrementally. So you create one layer, you add another layer, you add another layer, and that's how it goes. And every time you add a layer, you use the plus sign. So ggplot data equals mpg just says, I'm going to use ggplot on this particular package. 
And then I'm saying, oh, by the way, when I say plus, I'm going to add a layer of points. Okay, that is what the geom point function does. Okay, so geom point is what we'll use to add one layer of plot points, which is a scatter plot. Okay, and then we have to specify, after all, this data frame MPG contains many columns. So we have to tell the system which column we want to put on the x-axis, which column we want to put on the y-axis, and that is where the mapping comes into play. In other words, what we are saying is, look, there are some features of the graph that we are plotting. Namely, it has an x-axis, it has a y-axis. There are some features of the data frame that I am using. Namely, it has several columns. Okay. Now, what we want to tell the system is, which column of the data frame do you want to map to the x-axis of your plot? Which column of the data frame do you want to map to the y-axis of your plot? Okay, so the mapping is where you're establishing a connection between your data frame and the plot itself. I'm saying I want to put this aspect of the data frame on this aspect of the plot. I want to put that aspect of the data frame in that aspect of the plot. So we are mapping the data frame to the plot. Okay, and that's what we do when we call these specific layer functions. Okay, so geom point gives us a layer of scatter, a scatter plot layer. And in that scatter plot layer, we are telling it put this on the X, put that on the Y. The net result comes out like this. Okay. Of course, you could have got the same result by saying plot. And you could have said uh, the displacement comma HWY. Okay. HWY happens to be the highway mileage. This again is the data about cars and their MPG. And HWY is the highway mileage of each car. Displacement, DISPL, is the displacement of the engine. Okay, so what you're seeing here is that scatter plot, which is generated by this particular command, uh, this call to ggplot plus this call to geom point. Okay, so this whole thing is one single uh, plot that we got, and we got this as a result. So everything that you see here, like for example, the gray background, the light grid lines, all of that is default. We can change those, but seldom do we need to do that. Okay, so uh, the dgplot2 package, as I've already said, has many inbuilt data sets and mpg is just one of them. And therefore, there's no need for us to read this from a file. Okay, so let's understand this command in a little more uh, detail. Okay, so first aspect is ggplot data equals mpg that creates an empty plot okay it only creates the plotting area so if you just executed this alone ggplot data equals mpg you will see nothing right because it doesn't plot anything on the plotting area it just prepares the plotting area okay and then this is the one that is adding one layer of points a scatter plot layer okay and this is mapping the data to the plot okay so the plot is one aspect the data frame is another aspect the two are being mapped all that is fine the most important part i think from this all thing is the plus sign okay now technically speaking it doesn't matter if you put the plus sign on this line or on the next line but with ggplot it matters a lot right because if you don't put the plus sign here uh, at the end of the first line before you break the command into two lines then what will happen is if the plus sign is here when you execute this r will think that ggplot data equals mpg is your complete command and you will see nothing as a result the moment you put plus here and then move on to the next line the when the system tries to execute this it knows that this line is incomplete and it will then go on and execute the next line right that's the only reason why we have to if you break a ggplot command across multiple lines, you have to take care that to see that the plus is on the prior line. Okay, so that the system understands that this is as yet incomplete and something else is following. If the plus were not here, it would think this is the complete command and it will execute that and you will see nothing. Okay, so this is very important. If you're breaking ggplot commands in, across multiple lines, Make sure that the plus sign is at the end of each line. 
if you are breaking it you don't have to break it you could have put this whole thing in one line and that would have been perfectly fine okay so the structure of the ggplot call so far is first you call ggplot and then you say the name of the data frame say data equals name of the data frame and then you put a plus sign and then add layers of points right in case you wanted to add another layer you would have said plus here and new layer another layer plus there new layer okay so you can build all your plots incrementally quite easily and ggplot provides many geoms for each kind of plot that you want you can specify a geom okay and here in the mapping you specify what part of your data connects to what aspect of the plot okay so try running this command ggplot data equals mpg try running this command all by itself and see what happens okay so you could pause the video run the command and then come back to the video of course what you'll see is that you get a blank plot because anything that is visible has to be specified by way of geoms this command has no geoms so you don't see anything visible okay how many rows and columns are there in the auto mpg data set or in the mpg data set that we are using well we know we should just say dim mpg and we get this okay so here i'm just trying to uh, extend your understanding write our code to create a scatter plot of highway mileage as a function of number of cylinders right so i'm saying highway mileage expressed as a function of the number of cylinders so you want to think about what do you want to put on the x axis what do you want to put on the y axis right so typically when you say i want to find something as a function of something else right i'm saying y as a function of x okay so in that case whatever it is that is the result will go on the y axis and whatever is going to determine the result will go on the x axis and therefore we want to put number of cylinders on the x axis and highway mileage on the y axis okay other than that the command should be very straightforward everything is the same except that we'll change the mapping of x and y that's all okay so earlier we had uh y is mpg and x was i forget what it was it was something else we just changed that now okay write our code to draw a scatter pl plot of class versus drv okay now drv is a variable it's a factor that tells you what kind of drive the car has front wheel drive rear wheel drive and all wheel or four wheel drive so what you see here is of course the code is this class you want uh, aesthetic x equals class y equals drive because that's what we've been asked to do okay so class tells us what class of vehicle it is you know two seater uh, minivan etc etc and drive is as i said front wheel drive rear wheel drive four wheel drive etc so when you plot this the result looks like this okay it's quite different because after all earlier we know that our data set has 398 rows but here we can see we can count uh, you know the less than 15 points are being shown here why is that happening okay so maybe you should think a little bit before you continue with the video pause the video and think about why we are not seeing 398 different points here why is there you know less than 15 points that are being shown here okay so pause the video think about an answer and then continue now the reason this is happening of course is that class has seven different values okay so you've got two seater compact mid size minivan etc seven different values and drive has three different values front wheel rear wheel and four wheel drive that's it so there are only 21 possible combinations of these two variables right so even though we have 398 points there are only 21 distinct combinations and therefore 
at every point where you see a point there are probably many points which are being overplotted so for example i may have a hundred cars which are compact and front wheel drive okay there may be a hundred cars which are compact with front wheel drive but all those hundred cars are in just this one point okay so this is actually not one point it's been probably hundred points plotted one on top of the other okay that is why the plot looks like this the interesting thing is that you are able to do a scatter plot even though the variables are factors normally you would do a scatter plot only for variables which are numeric right but this allows you to do a scatter plot even for uh, even one or both of the axes could be factors okay and as i already said this struck the, the plot looks as it is as it does because many points are completely overlapping